Hi, this is Dr. D, and this video is about number representations. Learning objectives include converting numbers between different representations such as base 2 and 10, binary and decimal. We'll also talk about bases 8 and 16, and bases in general. For now, we'll just stick with unsigned values, that is positive numbers. We will talk about fractions. And through the course of this, you'll also get uh, hopefully some comfort level with uh, knowing the ranges of binary values. For example, with 10 bits or binary digits, we can represent values 0 to 1023. Now, number systems are ancient. You see this picture here in the upper right. Uh, this is uh, an example of some of the earliest examples of human writing, and it also includes numbers. Here it was baked in the the script was baked into clay, and this is sometime around 3000 to 5000 BC in Mesopotamia, which is present day Iraq. This is believed to be a receipt for clothing. Now, in this era, numbers were unary. That is, they lacked the tens place and the hundreds place and the associated weighting that we would have with these different decimal places. So if you wanted to write a decimal two, you just made two hash marks, decimal three, three hash marks, and so on. So you can appreciate there's a real limitation here for large values. They would require a lot of space. Now the earliest weighted number systems uh, that are known were base 10, as we use today. Uh, those early examples dated back to about 3000 BC. Why base 10? Well, throw up your hands and guess, eh? So how can uh, the weighted number systems help represent large values? Suppose two people were trying to count apples or something. Person A reaches 10, runs out of fingers. He says to person B, hey, hold up one finger. And then the process can continue. Person A can again reuse his 10 fingers uh, to count the next 10. Now the value contributed by a single finger is going to vary uh, for persons A and B. Person B, each finger contributes 10 towards the value. Person A, each figure, finger contributes 1. Thus, each person provides a weighted contribution to a final value. So, all right, so that sounds all right for base 10, but why do computers use base 2 or binary? Well, here are some issues to consider. Unfortunately, single, signal values are not ideal. Signal values may deviate uh, from ideal values, for example, of 0 and 5 due to a variety of effect, effects such as uh, the output resistance of transistors or a single output driving a large number of other inputs. That's referred to as fan out. Another effect is noise on power supply lines, which is often quite prevalent in digital circuits in particular. Um, the, so the electronic inputs of a logic gate need to interpret the signal correctly despite uh, some degree of signal corruption or noise as described above. Now, binary signals are advantageous because with a binary signal, an ideal gate uh, can, can accommodate a wide range of input values associated with logic low and logic high. Imagine in the uh, most extreme case, logic low could be interpreted as anything from zero, uh, just to shy of 2.5, that is zero to 50% of the dynamic range of the signal, and logic high could range from 2.5 to five. The other uh, top half of the 50% top half of the range. So binary has a inherent advantage because signals can be corrupted by theoretically as much as 50% and still be properly interpreted. Uh, this tolerance is referred to as noise margin. Real systems don't achieve this theoretical max, but binary still outweighs other options for bases. Imagine for base three, the theoretical best case would be a 33% tolerance or a 33% noise margin. So binary has the best noise margin, the best tolerance. That's why computers use binary numbers. 
they, signals can be interpreted the most reliably. So yes, uh, we're going to need to convert between decimal and binary representations. Now here's another issue to consider. Binary values can require many bit places. So here's a simple numeric example. Uh, the number 5000 in decimal, we'll write it this way, 5000, and then with a little 10 subscript to clearly indicate that this is a decimal base 10 value. Now if we do the conversion for that, uh, we end up with quite a few bits, quite a few bit places. And that's necessary because the weight of each bit place is less than in uh, the binary system compared to the decimal system. So we're going to sort of end up with a, a wide binary numbers. And to make these more readable, we often group the bits together. That's what uh, was done in this case. Uh, we formed bits, groups of four. Now, groups of three can be used. Uh, they were used historically. That's referred to as octal. Groups of four are a little, well, they're quite a bit more commonplace today. That's hex. We'll talk about both of these because you may run into octal, even though it isn't used too much anymore. Now, uh, here's, we'll touch base with our learning objectives again, since we are going to be working with binary numbers. Uh, we have these learning objectives going in between uh, bases 2 and 10 for sure. Also, uh, we'll throw in there base 8 for octal, 16 for hex, and we'll talk about uh, base conversions with an arbitrary uh, base value as well. That's a radix value. Now, For now, we'll just talk about uh, unsigned values, positives. We will talk about fractions. And as we go through this, hopefully you'll develop a better sense for the ranges of binary values that are associated with a given number of bits. Like uh, with 10 bits, we can uh, represent values 0 to 1023. Okay, so let's see here. How can we convert a binary value to decimal? Let's consider a case with 8-bit uh, binary numbers. Our bit places, BK would be B7 through B0 in this case. You can see them listed here okay, on the top row of the table. The weight of each bit place, BK, is 2 to the K. So you can see these weights, they're listed and they're written as base 10 numbers. Now the bit place with the highest weight, that would be B7 in this case, is deemed the most significant bit, or MSB. LSB is the least significant bit, B0 here. For an arbitrary base, uh, or radix R, uh, the weights are R to the K. Now, let's consider a specific binary value given here. We're going to write it in, uh, indicating each of the bit values under a given bit place. 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. Now, in order to convert from binary to the equivalent decimal, we just take all the occurrences of bit values, which are 1, multiply by the corresponding weight, and then add up those contributions. In this case, the binary value has uh, base 10 contributions of 128, 32, and 4. That's associated with bit 7, bit 5, and bit 2. We add those up and get a decimal equivalent of 164. So here we've converted from binary to decimal. Now, uh, what about decimal to binary? We're going to talk about two methods. Uh, method A I'll refer to as the find radix contributions method. And method B has a little bit more formal name, RRD, repeated radix division. You can use either method. So here's the first one, finding radix contributions. Start off with some given value. And we consider various powers of 2, 2 to the k, and find the largest one that is still less than the value b. We'll set that binary value, bk, to 1. Then we'll adjust v, we'll drop it down by the contribution 2 to the k, and we'll go, if v is still positive, we'll go back to step 2 and then find the next largest needed contribution uh, with this reduced v value. Uh, so the final binary value will have ones associated with each weighted contribution that were needed. Here's an example. 
we'll start out with a value of V of 25 in decimal. Uh, here are some weights, 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, and we don't need 32. 32 is larger than our original number 25. So our biggest contribution is going to be associated with bit B4, and we'll uh, mark down a 1 for that bit value. We now have a contribution of 16, so we'll take 25 minus 16, and we have 9 remaining. Continuing on then, uh, with this V value of 9 in decimal, uh, the largest needed contribution is going to be 8. We'll put a 1 down, associated with bit B3, uh, knock, and then reduce uh, our value by 8. That leaves us with 1. We don't need a contribution then for B2. We don't need a contribution from B1. We just need a contribution from B0. And that leaves us with 0 remaining. So uh, we started out with that uh, decimal number 25. And we found that it could be represented in binary as 11001, reading off this row here. Now, sometimes. Um, we want to represent a binary value with more bit places, like an 8-bit value. That's pretty common. Here we found the equivalent uh, to our original number in 5 bits. Now we could pad more uh, binary values onto the left side of our 5-bit number, as you see here in red. We can pad in as many as those, of those as we want, provided they're all 0. That means there's no contribution to the value 25 from any of those more significant bit values. So the 8-bit version of 25 is going to be 0001, 1001 in base 2. And uh, this method can be used with any arbitrary uh, radix. In those cases, the weights are r to the k. All right. Here's the second method, method B, repeated radix division. In this case, we'll start off with 37. In decimal, we'll convert it to binary. And uh, we'll go through this table here, and you'll see the process. But in general, the steps are as follows. Divide by 2. The remainder that you get from the division is the bit value. And then the quotient is divided again. The first bit value reveals B0. The next bit value you find reveals B1, and so forth. You can repeat that uh, in order to find as many bits as you need. OK, let's see how this works here. Uh, we'll see, start off with 37. We'll divide by the radix, 2. That's going to give us the quotient and the remainder. The remainder is copied over to be the bit value. We then take the quotient and move it down to the next row. Divide it by 2, get a new quotient, new remainder. That remainder, here's 0, becomes bit value B1, and so forth. 9 then continues on to the next row. OK, now this method can be used with any base R, radix. Uh, the radix would appear here in these divisions. And the remainders that we get would vary between 0 and r minus 1. So we would pick up larger numeric values here for each radix place instead of just the zeros and 1s for the bit places. Okay, So we talked about two methods to convert decimal to binary. And those both work fine with integers. Uh, for fractions, in my opinion, method A works a little bit better. So let's take a look at that. Uh, suppose we had this first number, 6.625 in decimal, and uh, we want to convert that to binary. And let's, ha let's define uh, our for ourselves as having three fractional bits. So what's going to happen here? Similar process. We'll start off with the 6.625. We'll consider various contributions here. And for example, the largest one that would help us would be 4. We subtract that away. Then uh, consider the next largest contribution, 2. Sounds good. Okay, We then have a fractional value. We don't, B0 can be a 0. Uh, we'll add in 0.5 associated with the B minus 1 place. Uh, that's going to give us uh, 1 eighth remaining. 
So we'll skip over a quarter, 0.25, with a zero there, and we'll pick up an eighth there. So our resulting value is 110.101. You see the uh, radix point there in the final result. Now in this case, the decimal value could be represented exactly. Okay, this fractional value, it could be represented exactly. Well, that you can imagine that's in general that's not always going to happen. Uh, so, about the best thing that you can do uh, if you need to uh, represent a number and you only have uh, certain precision given your fractional bits, well, you can just round. That's that's about your only option. Um, depending on the original value and the number of fractional bits, uh, you may not get that exact representation and thus have to round. Um, now, the number of fractional bits determines the spacing on the real number line between representable values. So if we're just work, working with integers, you have zero fractional bits, and the spacing on the number line in between representable values is one, just counting up the integers. If you have one fractional bit, then you get two to the minus one, or a half in between representable values, and so forth, 10 fractional bits, we're talking about 0 0.00976, 000 -0 for example. Okay, now let's see here. What about those uh, base 8 and base 16 numbers? Uh, how can they help with uh, the wider uh, binary, the, why these wider binary numbers that have lots of bit places? Well, what we do is to, for base 8 and 16, known as octal and hex, respectively, uh, we group the bits together. For octal, we group our bits in uh, sets of three, and for hex, we group them together in sets of four. So given a binary value like this, uh, we'll begin grouping on the right side, and uh, so here we would have, beginning uh, over on the right, 111, next group, 011, and then for the leftmost group, we actually didn't have enough of our original uh, binary bits, so I can pad in a zero on the left side, no problem, and that doesn't affect uh, the binary value. So here we have three groups of three uh, in binary, and we've grouped them in order to form, determine our uh, hex digits, or I'm sorry, octal digits, and this uh, first one to the right, 111, that is the value 7. So our rightmost octal digit is 7. Uh, this is octal 3, and here we have octal 1. So we get that 01011111 binary is 137 in octal. Okay, base 16, what about that? Well, the, we have a fun little nuance here. Uh, with base 16, you know, we're going to need to represent values between 0 all the way up to the radix minus 1. So 0 to, uh, to 15, those need to be represented with a single symbol. So no problem in uh, base 10. We're used to that uh, scheme. We use the symbols 0 to 9. But for hex, we need 0 to 15. All right, so what do we do? We'll use 0 to 9 for the first 10 symbols, and then we use A through F for 10 through 15. So in this case, if we had a, the same binary value, we'll form two groups of four and then convert each of these um, val binary values here uh, to the equivalent uh, hex digit. So 1111 is actually uh, hex F, right? and 0101 is hex 5. So we're seeing that that binary value is 5F base 16. Now there's some shorthand notations for the uh, base subscript that I've been using. Uh, if you, uh, you'll often see this 0x5F, for example. That's very common for hex numbers. You'll see a 0B prefix often used with binary numbers. Um, there are some ways that prefixes that you'll use uh, with octal for octal numbers. Uh, we won't focus on them quite as much. They're pretty old school. I'll just stick with the subscript subscript eight for octal numbers in the class. Okay, so this concludes the video, and. Uh,
as a recap, we talked about the following uh, learning objectives. We talked about converting number representations. Uh, base 2 and base 10 are uh, two uh, big areas of focus. Also octal and hex, that's base 8 and base 16. And then we'll uh, just, uh, to broaden your experience, we'll talk about other bases as well, arbitrary bases as well. For now, we'll just stick with unsigned values, that is positive, positive or zero. And we did talk about fractions. Also, during this process, particularly that method A for converting to binary, uh, you began to see these, uh, what will become very familiar uh, sequences of powers of two. Okay? And uh, it's very helpful to know that. Uh, for example, uh, if you're curious, if you needed to uh, convert a number uh, to uh, binary and say it was around 1,000, you would know, oh, okay, well, that's going to that's gonna take 10 bits. Okay? So it's helpful to kind of get a feel for uh, the uh, weight of the various uh, bit places as we're working with binary numbers. Okay, hope you found this helpful. Bye-bye.